Algebra 1, 11.1a. We're in a new chapter, chapter 11 now, and we're going to talk about radical expressions and equations. And this video is about square roots and principal square roots. When we raise a number to a second power, we've squared the number. So 5 to the second power equals 5 times 5. That equals 25. Well, sometimes we might need to find the number that was squared. So they'll give us the 25, and we'll need to find the 5. We call this finding a square root of a number. To find the square root of 9, we figure out what number multiplied to itself equals 9. 3 times 3 equals 9, so the square root of 9 is 3. 3 to the second power equals 9. And the formal definition is the number c is a square root of a if c squared equals a. And every positive number has two square roots, a positive square root and a negative square root. Every positive number has two square roots. So the square roots of 25, and 25 is positive, isn't it? There are 5 and negative 5. 5 to the second power is 5 times 5. That's a positive 25. And negative 5 to the second power is negative 5 times negative 5. That equals a positive 25. So every positive number has two square roots, a positive and a negative. Okay? The positive square root is also called the principal square root. Remember that. The positive square root is also referred to as the principal square root. When you see the symbol, looks like a check mark with a line, doesn't it? This is called the radical sign or radical symbol. And the radical sign indicates that we have a principal square root. We know it's a positive number. We just see this sign. We know it's a positive number. To indicate the negative square root, you're going to see a minus sign in front of the radical sign. See that? So that means when we have 25 underneath this radical sign, that means we need to find the square root of 25. That's a positive 5. And when we see the minus sign in front of it, the negative square root of 25 is a negative 5. We call that number underneath the radical sign the radicand. We'll cover that more in Algebra 2. We can also use the symbol with a plus or minus in front of it. But you have to be careful because that means two answers. When you see a 25 or a number, a radicand, inside of here with a plus or minus in front of it, that means they want you to name the positive and negative square root. If the 25 was in here, then you're going to have two answers, the positive 5 and the negative 5, okay? Two answers. Any positive or negative number that is squared is going to be positive. So if we have a positive 5 to the second power, it's a positive number. 4 that's positive and squared is going to be a positive number. And a negative 5 that's squared is going to be positive. And a negative 4 that's squared is going to be positive because negative times negative makes positive, doesn't it? So any positive or negative number that is squared is going to be positive. Now because of this, negative numbers do not have square roots in the set of real numbers. And I'll have a link to an earlier video from uh, middle school that tells you the difference between real numbers, rationals, irrationals, whole numbers, natural numbers. There'll be a link that you can click on in the description of this video if you want to get a real quick review of that, all right? When we see a four, as the radicand underneath the radical symbol, we read this as the positive square root of 4. We can also read it as the principal square root of 4. It's positive, isn't it? When we see the minus sign in front of it, we read this as the negative square root of 64. And the square root of 4 is 2 because 2 to the second power is 4. 2 times 2 is 4. And the negative square root of 64 is a negative 8 because negative 8 squared equals 64 because negative 8 times negative 8 equals 64. See? When you see x squared equals 16, we can say x is equal to positive or negative 4 because either way, positive or negative, it's going to equal that 16. We get two answers, don't we? And this is interesting. Did you know that if you have 2 squared equals 4 and you need to remove this exponent, you can just take it away and put a radical symbol around the 4. And it works vice versa. We can do the opposite. If you have a radical symbol around this 4 and you want to get rid of it, 
we can just put a little square on this side of the equation to get rid of that radical symbol, okay? And little zero says that he only has one square root, zero. The square root of zero is zero because zero times zero is zero, all right? Just remember, we multiply two negatives and make a positive. Now our next video, 11.1b, we're going to talk about real numbers. We're going to talk a little bit about irrational numbers in there too. And if you want to link to any of the previous videos from chapter 10 that we just finished, just click on the description of this video and you can go right to them. And there'll be that classifying numbers video in there, okay? All right, so now our whole chapter 11 is going to be about radicals, all right? I'll see you next video. I hope this was helpful. Bye.